In this video, I want to go over all the theorems in chapter one, which is the linear equations and linear algebra chapter. Theorem one, each matrix has a unique reduced echelon form. When you take a matrix and put it into its reduced echelon form, there's only going to be one possible way to do that. Theorem two, a linear system is consistent if and only if the rightmost column is not a pivot column. So recall that a pivot column is a column with only ones and zeros, and there's one, one, and then everything below and above are zeros. Let's say something like that, and this is just the other columns in it. So the rightmost column would be the answer, so to say, the right side of the equal sign in a system of linear equations. So if this let this outer or this rightmost column were to be a pivot column, let's say it's like one, zero, zero, zero. These top three rows don't cause any issues because because it's possible for this top row to equal zero if this first term were zero, but it's not possible for this last term to be equal to one because everything before it is zeros, if that makes sense. So another way to say that is it's consistent if and only if the augmented matrix has no rows of the form 0, 0, 0, 0, however many columns there are, to some non-zero value of B. So if it does have this form, we can say the linear system is inconsistent, meaning there is no possible solutions. Theorem 3. If A is an M by N matrix, with columns A1 through AN, and B is an RM, meaning it has M rows, then we'll call this equation one, equation two, equation three. We're saying all of these equations have the same solution set. So they're all just, all three of these are saying the exact same thing. This first one is a matrix equation. The second one is a vector equation. And the third one is a linear equation with using an aug augmented matrix. Theorem four, let A be an M by N matrix. The following four statements are all saying the same exact thing. The first statement is for each B in RM, the equation AX equals B has a solution. Each B in RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. The columns of A span RM. A has a pivot position in each row. If you know one of these are true, you can conclude the rest of these are also true. And vice versa, if one is false, then they are all false. Theorem five. If A is an M by N matrix, U and V are vectors in RN, meaning they have the same amount of columns as A and C is a scalar, then we know that the distributive property holds true and the associative property holds true. Theorem six. So this one is kind of a silly one. Suppose AX equals B is consistent, meaning there is exactly one solution or infinitely many solutions, and P is a solution, so A P equals B. P is some vector when multiplied by A, we'll get B. Then the solution set of AX equals B is the set of all vectors of the form W equals P plus Y, where Y is any solution of the homogeneous equation AX equals zero. So there are a lot of variables in this. If Y is a solution of AX equals zero, then whenever A is multiplied by y, you get all zeros. So and the only way to do that is, is if you multiply the entire matrix by zero, because if you think about it, well, the only way to get zero is to multiply something by zero. So if we have some matrix like one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Sorry, that's kind of hard to read. The only way to get all of those to equal zero is if we multiply it by zero. 
So this W right here is kind of like this X. So we can rewrite this as A times P plus Y. Then we can go back to theorem 5, saying we can use the distributive property. Say this is equal to A plus A times P plus A times Y. So A times P we said equals B, and A times Y we said equals 0. Those are the same thing as B. So A, this equals B. That's all this is saying. Kind of a long way to say something plus zero equals itself. Theorem 7 is a long paragraph that is very hard to understand, so I only wrote what it's actually saying. And it's saying that the two definitions of linear independence are equivalent. So the two definitions are Number one, the columns of a matrix A are linearly independent if and only if AX equals zero has only the trivial solution. And the trivial solution is when X equals zero. So there's, if there is some other possible X that makes AX equals zero, then the columns are linear dependent. And two, if the set of two vectors are not multiples of each other, then they are linearly independent. The set of vectors can either be linearly independent or linearly dependent. There's one or the other, always. If it violates either of them, then they're linearly dependent. Theorem 8. If a set contains more vectors than there are entries in each vector, then the set is linearly dependent. So that means if there are more columns than rows, the set is linearly dependent. If P is less than N, then it's linearly independent. Theorem 9. If the set of vectors in Rn contains a zero vector, then the set is linearly dependent. So if the matrix has a column of all zeros, then you can conclude that that whole set of vectors, a whole set of columns, are linearly dependent. Theorem 10. Let T, Rn to Rm, be a linear transformation. Then there exists a unique matrix A such that T of x equals A of x. So T is a linear transformation, so if I were to transform x, then there exists some matrix A that if I were to multiply A times X, I would get the same thing. Theorem 11. Let T from Rn to Rm be a linear transformation. T is 1 to 1 if and only if T of X equals 0 has only the trivial solution. The trivial solution, once again, is when X itself is zero. I can describe this using functions. So a function is one to one when each x value outputs only one y value. If t of x equals zero were to have another solution that made t of x equal to zero, that would mean there are two different x vectors that would make t equal to zero, which cannot happen in a one-to-one -one transformation or one-to-one -one function. Theorem 12. Let T, Rn to Rm, be a linear transformation and let A be the standard matrix for T. Then T maps Rn onto Rm if and only if A span Rm. Looking back to theorem 4, Another way to say A span Rm is that A has a pivot position in each row, or A has exactly M amount of pivots, or for each B in Rm, Ax equals B has a solution. And then B, T is 1 to 1 if and only if the columns of A are linearly independent. Looking back at theorem 9 and 8 and 7, another way to say A is linearly independent. The set of vectors, out of the set of vectors in A, none of them are multiples of each other. 
or ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. So all of these theorems intertwine with each other and a lot of them are saying the same exact thing. This concludes all of the theorems in chapter one. Stay tuned for chapter two. When that video goes up, I will link it below.